Hello, I'm Keisha. And I'm Case Only Child. Yes, and we are here today and we're excited to see you and to know you're here and learning about God. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really miss everyone and we really will, can't wait to see you guys again, all your beautiful faces and, and learning about God and his word. We really miss you. So right now we're going to discuss the things that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Does anyone remember Noah? Remember Noah was an obedient man and he listened to what God told him to do even though everyone thought he was crazy and they didn't believe that God was telling him those things. But he was and he was obedient and he followed God's word and when the flood came the rains that no one had ever saw came he was protected and his family was protected so we want to be like him and we also studied about the tower of Babylon does anyone remember that yes you're right very good good you do remember that the tower was getting built and it was great and everyone was one. They all spoke one, one language, they were all one race, they were all the same people, but they wanted to be for themselves. They weren't focusing on God and his word. They were thinking of how they can build their own kingdom and we don't want that. We wanna do always do what God wants us to do. So this week, we are going to read God's word and we are going to talk about a story when God called a special man. And this is a man he loved very much. Do you know that God loves you? He loves your mommy. He loves us. He loves your dad. He loves mommy, grandma, your brothers and sisters. And sometimes like Pastor Larry said, he loves us even when we do bad, but he's very, very sad. But God loved this special man. His name was Abram. And he had a wife. Her name was Sarah. But later on, God changed their name to, does anyone know? Raise your hand if you know. I know. Do you know Kate Solmi? Yeah. He later, he later changed their name to? Abraham and Sarah <laughs> and at the time of this story they were very very old they were almost 75 are you 75 it, no are you 75 case on me <laughs> no I'm not 75 but they were 75 at the time God calls. Sometimes he calls us very young, like you and you and you, but sometimes he calls us at my age, and sometimes he calls us when we're much older, like Abraham and Sarah. We just need to listen and hear his call. He had a very large family and a nephew whose name was Lot. So let's find out what this exciting adventure was when God called Abraham. Okay, so we will read the story from Genesis 12, verse 1 through 9. Make sure you have your Bibles out. Sometimes we use devices, but a Bible is always a good source of God's word. So, okay, so me, can you read for us? Yes. Yeah. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. All And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went, as the Lord has told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sari, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they have acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah. 
in Shilham. At the time Canaanites were on the land, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who appeared to him. For there he went toward the hill east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and came and called on the name of the Lord. And then Abraham set out to continue toward the Gev. Okay, thank you, Kason. So very nice of you to read God's word. Now, in this story, Ab Abr Abram at that time, and his name changed to Abraham, was called not only by God, but also to move his entire family, his, his wife, his kids, his nephew Lot even went in his household, and they left on camels. And they traveled with kids, little kids, big kids like you. And they walked for many, many, many miles by foot. And when they were tired, they rested just in the great outdoors. Has anyone ever went camping? That's kind of what Abraham was doing. But he was going to where God told him to go and where God wanted him to stop at. Let's see who was listening when Kaysomi read the story. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Now raise your hand, not your voice, if you know the answer, okay? What did God, let's start with question one. I'll repeat it. What did God tell Abraham to do? Anyone? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know. Do you know Kaysomi? Yeah. What did God say? Abraham had to leave his family to go to where God wanted him to take him. Yeah. Sometimes it's very hard to do what God wants us to do. But we have to know in our hearts and in our mind to believe that what God has for us is perfect. He knows what's best for us at all times. So let's obey. And very good for everyone that was listening and got the question right. Very good. Now, I'll ask question two. What did God say? What did he say to Abraham that he was going to do? Do you know? Do you know? I'll give you a hint. Did, did God say that he will make the nation great? Okay, so me? Yes. Yes, he did. He did say that he was going to make the nation great. And not only great, very great. He said as great as many grains are on the sand. And have you ever been to the beach and picked up a hand of sand and the little pieces that fell? Those are grains, small pieces of sand. And that was the nation that God was going to make for Abraham. And God also said that he would bless. Would he bless them? Did God say he would bless them, Case on me? Do you remember? Yes. All right. And did he say, go by himself? Abraham, Abraham go by yourself? Does anyone know? <gasps> you know. Good. Very good. Very good. You guys are such great listeners. Thank you. Case on me. Did you tell Abraham to go by himself? No, Let's... he said take his family. Right, very good. You have the answer right. You did it. Very good. I knew you were listening. Okay, then he asked, he said all people on earth will be blessed through Abraham. Is that right? Oh, good. I love the way you're raising your hand. Can you please tell me? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so me, did he say he will make all people on earth will be a blessing through Abraham? Yes. Very good. You did wonderful. How did Abraham show his faith? Oh, do you know? Did he? Oh, okay. Very good answer. You're really thinking and listening. Thank you for being a great listener. Okay, so me, did he say how Abraham was going to show his faith, did he say by leaving his country? Was 
Was that how he showed his faith? Yeah, Abraham showed his faith by leaving the countries of his family and believing in God. Very good. See, sometimes faith means we have to do things that we don't trust, and that's a little bit scary. But it's okay because God is protecting us, and he's keeping us safe, and he's loving us, and he's letting us know everything is going to work out for the good when we believe him. And when we have faith, faith is a big word for Abraham, okay? And with Abraham, when, let's do question number five. When Abraham got to the new land, why did he build an altar? An altar, we don't, we go to our altar in prayer. We go to our altar, here's a hint, to do other things. Our altar is usually a cross. But Abraham built another altar. And what did he go to that altar that altar for? He went to the altar to worship God. Yes, he was just worshiping God for keeping them safe for their travels, for leading them, for giving them the vision and the promise that he was promising. He gave God the prom he gave God worship before it even happened. So sometimes when we pray and believe for something, we just have to worship in the good and the bad, are happy and sad, and just know that God is there and he's going to lead and guide us and protect us. Okay? So let's see. Let's have another question. Can you think of any blessings that God gave you? I know we have a lot. Oh, all the hands went up. There's tons of blessings in this house. Oh my gosh, I love it. How about you? Good, and you? Wonderful. Good, everyone has a blessing. You have a blessing? Oh, me too. I have lots of blessings. Wonderful. Oh, you got something new? Oh, it's your birthday. I love it. Wonderful blessings. Can you tell me, what are some of the blessings that God has given to you? A house? Good. My friends? Wonderful. And mom. Oh, so sweet. Thank you. I love that. He is very right. God blesses us with things that sometimes we don't know is a blessing. But everything that is good and perfect comes from God, and it is a blessing. So remember to count our blessings. When we're sad or mad, just say, what blessings do I have? And then you'll start feeling happy again, okay? So let's remember that. Our last questions. How can we thank God for his blessings? You? Oh, good. I've seen a lot of you doing it today. Yes, I saw a lot of people doing what God requires of us. Uh-huh, and things that we can thank God for. You all came here thankful, and you all came with a good spirit. I love it. Good. Good. Okay, so me. How can we thank God for his blessings? We can sing, we yes. can pray, and we can dance. Amen. I love it. And some of us have that special blessing within us. We are very good. Our voices are beautiful. So if you have a beautiful voice, use it for the Lord. And if you don't have a beautiful voice, sometimes like me, we still praise the Lord. Because God said, make a joyful noise unto him and we can all pray and we can all give God our hearts and prayer is just talking to God. It's giving him your heart and letting him know the things that are in your heart and giving him thanks and glory. So we can all do that. And that is the way we show God our gratitude and happiness, thankfulness for his blessings. Okay. That's why let's pray. Father God, thank you for calling Abraham out and making him a great nation. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us, Lord. Thank you for our mommies, our daddies, our home, our cars. And Lord, thank you for our closeness right, our closeness right now, even though we can't go out as much as we want to. We can enjoy our family and we can enjoy the great things that you have given us at home. We just love and we praise you. Forgive our sins and make us the people you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you for coming this week. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.